morning. We thank you for worshiping with us wherever you are, the Allisonville Christian Church community. We hope today's worship service will fill your spirit, and we give God thanks for the community that continues to connect us all through the loving acts of Christ. Let us worship God. Good morning, Allisonville Christian Church, and welcome to all our visitors. Here are the announcements for the week of July 5th, 2020. Our ever-popular online Bible study discussion group, led by Diane, will be taking a short vacation, but will return the week of July 12th. Find the reading schedule, meeting times, and Zoom codes at www.allisonville.org slash Bible study. The ACC elders are launching a new initiative that we hope will support and build up the life of our congregation as a faith community, especially during these difficult, troubling, and trying times. A brief weekly message from your elders will offer a rich variety of understandings in living our faith as Christians, even as many of us are experiencing separation and isolation from one another. Look for it in your email or mail each Friday during the coming weeks. And as always, the elders appreciate any and all feedback to this new program of congregational care. Calling all kids, help us decorate for online worship by submitting your artwork to be enjoyed during the service. Please email photos or scans of your work to Jason Tuttle. The ACC Book Club will meet via WebEx on Tuesday, July 28th at 7 p.m. If you would like to join our group, contact Karen Bain so that she can give you an invitation to the meeting. Our next book is A Man Called Ave by Frederick Backman. Next Sunday, July 12th is Food Pantry Sunday, and Steve Belding will be at church from 12 to 2 p.m. to accept drop-off donations of food to go to the Linwood Food Pantry. 
As always, you are also welcome to make donations by sending a check directly to Linwood Christian Church and note that it is for the food pantry in the memo line. As always, there is still a lot happening in our community and behind the scenes and many ways to remain active participants in living God's love out loud. Be sure to keep an eye on our weekly newsletter for the latest information and you can also find more at Allisonville's Facebook page or visit our website at allisonville.org. Arise, people of God. Arise and see the clearing ahead which God has made. Arise and worship the God who knows your name and dances with you and the whole of creation. Friends, let us worship. Thy fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mouth. I'm fixed upon it, mount of my redeeming love. Here I raise to thee an altar, hither by thy help I'll come. And I hope by thy good pleasure, safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious 
righteous blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to Hi everybody. Today for Children's Moment, we thought we'd take you on a really cool adventure to show you something out in the forest. But first, I want to introduce my buddy. What's your name? My name is Shinji and I am 10. This is Shinji and he's my nephew. So he and I decided to go out and see if we could find something called a nurse log. So Shin, do you want to show us what a nurse log is? So a nurse log is basically what, so like, when a tree dies, it's like... When it falls over. Yeah, when it right? falls over and dies, it kind of decomposes and becomes like soil. So like all of the like trees are like, there's some fresh soil over there, so let's go, you know, grow over there. So they grow and we get what's called a nurse tree. Exactly. So a tree dies and I'm imagining a little squirrel saying, oh no, where's my home? Where do I live now? But what's really cool is that the cycle of life keeps recycling all that that tree was so that it can make a new tree so that all those other squirrels and all those little creatures that need a place to live have a place to go. So I kind of think that's like God. God helps us through really hard times in our lives. Sometimes even our home doesn't look like we thought it would before and we don't know what's gonna happen next. But the beautiful thing is God helps us through those really difficult times to make sense of our lives and to help us grow, to give us what we need so that we can keep continuing on even if the world looks a little different than it did before. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for all the ways you help us grow even from old things. Help us see you wherever we go and to be your love. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, bye-bye. See you later. See ya. Cool. Good morning. As we enter a time for prayer, I invite you to take a moment, close your eyes, find your quiet center. Let God fill your lungs with fresh air. Today, we lift up those who are continuing recovery Cindy McDonald and Cindy Kobel. We pray for Mary Caress and for Tim Gomelock as he undergoes surgery tomorrow. We continue praying for Liz Nelson and for Don Maines. And we lift up to God the family and loved ones of our dear sister, Vicki Holland, who died this week. We pray for those with ongoing concerns for Bill and Cora King, for Wilma Emick, and for all those who are suffering COVID-19 and the medical professionals who continue to combat the virus. We pray for our leaders nationally and locally as coronavirus resurges in many of the states across the country. And we lift up our global ministry partners this morning in Puerto Rico. Dear friends, I'll offer a pastoral prayer and afterwards invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer using sins. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, this morning we gather yet again before you in spirit, giving you thanks for the opportunity to see all that we can see to see the peaks and the valleys of your beautiful earth 
and of our lives during which we know that you are present with us through it all. This morning, we lift up those whose bodies and souls are in need of healing and recovery. Give each one the bread they need for today that they may continue on strengthened and renewed. And we lift up those who are grieving, those grieving the loss of a loved one, those grieving many different kinds of losses in their lives. Tend each one with your loving care as Christ cares for all and guide us to them, O God that we may be companions on their journey, helping them along as we can. We give you thanks for the blessing of all that we have learned through this quarantine time and that which you continue to teach us. Give us eyes to see the new answers you are giving us in this moment in our lives and in history and set our hearts afire yet again for all the new ways we can find to show God's love and to show Christ's mercy in the world to ourselves and to our neighbors, those with whom we agree and those with whom we disagree. O oh God, may your spirit dwell within our hearts and souls so that all may know the light with which you guide our world. One that points us toward life, toward love, toward nourishment, and together we pray the words your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.
as long as life endures. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like the flood, His mercy My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like the blood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing. shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and all the domestic animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind blow over the earth and the waters subsided. The fountains of the deep and the windows of the heavens were closed. The rain from the heavens were restrained and the waters gradually receded from the earth. At the end of 150 days, the waters had abated. And in the seventh, in the seventh month, on the 17th day of the month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ariat. The tale of Noah and the ark is a familiar one to all of us. Even little children can tell you the story, and they can draw a picture of Noah's grand boat, a veritable zoo upon the waters, with two giraffes with their long necks sticking out of an upper portal. I've been thinking about those ancient mariners in recent days, because it occurs to me that they were the first family to go through what all of us have been going through, a shelter-in-place quarantine. And it occurs to me that there is wisdom in the story of Noah and the Ark that may be worth pondering while we are on a similar journey. There are two things that I think we can learn from the experience of Noah and his family. One is do not rush your return. And the other is do not hope to return to normal. Those are important lessons. Let us take them one at a time. If you ask those same little children how long Noah and his family were on the ark, they will likely respond 40 days and 40 nights. That is a good response, but it is not even close to their duration. The scripture says that it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. That is a long time. By then, all the land was covered with water. The text says that 150 days after that, the boat came to rest on a mountain, Ararat by name. And still they were not done. 40 days after that, Noah felt compelled enough and comfortable enough to open a window and send out various birds as aerial scouts. That process took another three weeks before it was evident that it was safe to disembark. Altogether, it was a seven and a half month voyage. Wow. I suspect on the front end of that journey, they had no idea how long this would last. How could they? 
It was unprecedented in their lifetime. So too, our sheltering in our homes due to the coronavirus. Who could have imagined back in early March that we would be living as we are today? You know, 40 days and 40 nights of rain would be hard to take. But I suspect that the hardest part may have been after the rain, when the skies turned blue and they were itching to get off the boat. Can't you imagine Noah's sons coming up to him and pestering him? Is it time? And Noah shaking his head, no, not yet. Or Mrs. Noah giving him that look that says, really? And Noah with a shake of the head saying, no. Did you know that Noah is a direct ancestor of Dr. Fauci? It is true. Not everyone knows that. Noah wisely waited and compelled his family to do so until it was safe. And we should do the same. It is hard, particularly when there are blue skies and a yearning within all of us to come back and be together. But you have to let the thing that caused the quarantine in the first place subside. In Noah's case, water, lots and lots of water. And in our case, a virus that has now encompassed the whole world. This is already stretched out longer than any of us could have predicted, and it could go a long time more, maybe seven and a half months or even a year. We should not rush it. We will get back together again someday. We will hug and laugh and sing and share coffee and donuts and casseroles and the sacred elements of the Lord's table. We really will, but it's going to be a while. So we wish you should be patient until the time is right and safe for all. So do not rush your return. When you hear Dr. Fauci say, be cautious, do not rush this, think of Noah. The second lesson from this ancient tale is even more important, I think, and that is do not hope for things to return to normal. My hope is that the world we re-enter is not the same as the one we left behind as we began to sequester, because that world, our world, was deeply fractured and needed a great deal of work. There is a sad part of the Noah story that we do not tend to dwell on. Once Noah and his family got off the ark, some trouble ensued. For one thing, Noah set about right away planting a vineyard and making some wine, and he got drunk and passed out. On one occasion that we know about, some shouting and cursing happened between Noah and his sons. There were some embarrassing situations that set in motion future discord that would haunt Noah's descendants for generations, even to today. Oh, no. We do not know if Noah had a drinking problem before and it re-emerged, or if it developed because of his being cooped up too long. We do not know. But it was real, and it posed a problem for him and his family. It strained and broke relationships. Suddenly we are back to the same broken and fractured society that had grieved the heart of God in the first place. This is so sad. This grand opportunity to begin again, to start over under the banner of a rainbow filling the sky was lost. And when we hear Noah say with anger, cursed be Canaan, lowest of slaves shall he be to his brothers, we have to weep because we know that sets in motion racial division and brokenness that divide us today. So no. We do not want things to return to normal on the backside of this quarantine because the way things have been, the way things are, is not good. The streets of our cities are right now filled with protesters expressing their despair at the senseless death of George Floyd. He lost his life by the hand of some police officers who were sworn to protect him, but also by a society that labeled him and treated him because of his race as less valuable than others. No wonder so many feel rage. We have a lot of work to do to make things right, to repair this breach, 
And it must begin among those of us with privilege and power. There are some beginning signs that bring hope. Sheriff Chris Swanson in Flint, Michigan, who is white, asked protesters in his city how he could help them. And they said, walk with us. And so he put down his baton, he took off his helmet and did. He had his officers do the same. It transformed the protest into a parade. And as a result, there was no damage to property in Flint. No one was arrested and no one got hurt. Sheriff Swanson says that is the way it should be. And he is calling on his counterparts all across the nation to model his action, to lay down their swords and walk with those in their streets. Or consider Raul Islam, who owns an Indian restaurant in Minneapolis. When unrest in that city first developed in the days after the death of George Floyd, Raul converted his restaurant to a makeshift field hospital giving respite to protesters who had inhaled too much tear gas or had been injured by rubber bullets. Eventually, though, his restaurant, named after a peacemaker, Gandhi, was consumed by fire. His daughter, Hafsa, said she was angry until she heard her father speaking to a friend on the phone. Let my building burn, he said. Justice needs to be served. We can rebuild a building, but we cannot rebuild a human. The community is still here, and we can work together to rebuild. Wow. If a Michigan sheriff and a Muslim restaurant owner can demonstrate such love and compassion and commitment to community, what might we who follow Jesus do? Dismantling the structures of racism and privilege and inequity in our society is long, hard work. But now is the time for us to do it, coming out of a quarantine. Do not hope to return to normal. As people of faith, let us lead the way to create a world where racial divisions and prejudice that stain our society can give way to life that is fair and just for all and where everyone can breathe. May it be so. God of the sparrow, God of the whale, God of the swelling stars, how does the creature say all? How does the creature say praise? God of the trumpet blast how does the creature cry woe how does the creature cry say god of the rainbow god of the cross god of the say thanks. God of the hungry, God of the sick, God of the prodigal, how does the creature say care? How does the creature say
service for generosity and for partaking of this meal of love. I invite you to reflect on some of the lessons you might be learning during this quarantine. A lesson that I continue to learn Sunday after Sunday is just the overwhelming sense of God's Holy Spirit and presence that is within us and with us as we gather, even virtually. That God shows up wherever and whenever we choose to give from our hearts. That God shows up whenever and wherever we choose to take a simple loaf of bread and a simple cup and break it so that it can be shared with others. This morning, as we give and as we receive of this bread and cup, I invite you to give generously however that looks for you. You can do that by visiting allisonville.org or by mailing a check to our church address, which is listed below. Will you pray with me? Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for your overwhelming presence within us and through us and always present, even in this moment, even in this time. You continue to surprise us and you continue to spark our creativity in moments when we thought we had no way. So bless these gifts as we continue the work you have called us to. And bless this bread and bless this cup, that they may go into the continued nourishing of our souls and of our bodies, so that we can rest and wake tomorrow fresh and ready to do it again. For you are the one who calls us your disciples and friend. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. And so together, we remember the night that Jesus gathered with his disciples, where they had a meal together. Jesus was about to give the ultimate gift. But before that, he took a loaf of bread and he gave thanks for it and he blessed it. And then he broke it. And he said, take of this, all of you. This is my body and it's given for you. And after supper, Jesus took the cup and after pouring it out, he gave thanks for it and he blessed it and he said, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of the sins of many. Dear friends, as often as you gather, eat of this bread, drink of this cup, in remembrance of me. Let us keep the feast.
Dear friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who journey the way with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of new life be with you always. Amen.